Adrian Karabinsky of the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter. I'll serve as the moderator today. Uh, some of you from uh, the Ukrainian American community know about uh, Metropolitan Andrei Shapitsky and his good works, and I believe all of you know about Ronald Lauder's major contributions to Jewish life, uh, culture, and his contributions to philanthropy in this country and uh, within uh, Israel and the Jewish diasporas, including in Ukraine. Uh, we will have a short film uh, and a speaker to follow who will give you a sense of who uh, Andrei Shaptitsky was and uh, why we believe that a medal and an award in his honor is a proper memorialization of, uh, in the spirit of Ukrainian Jewish uh, cooperation. Uh, Szeptyski came from an ennobled Polish family of Ukrainian roots. Uh, he had, uh, he stood, he was a giant of a man standing six foot ten. He was an aristocrat account. His uh, grandfather was one of the great uh, Polish uh, playwrights. His brother was a general in the Polish army. His brother Clemens was another man who, like Andre, uh, chose a life of faith in what was then the Ukrainian Greek Catholic or the Ukrainian Union Church. Clemens was beatified a few years ago uh, for his uh, good works, including for his uh, work in saving uh, Jewish souls uh, during uh, the Holocaust. Uh, Count uh, Andre Count Shepitsky, the Metropolitan Archbishop of Lvov, uh, was a major philanthropist. Uh, he came from a wealthy family. He was a patron of the arts, funding arts scholarships, amassing a great collection of uh, arts that is now the basis of a, of a major museum in, uh, in Lviv. Uh, he was a developer of the cooperative movement. He encouraged the creation of businesses. Uh, so above all, though, he was a uh, religious leader and a great moral leader. All these qualities made him a nation builder for a stateless people. And without comparing the two men, uh, for that is an impossible task, I think we can see in some of the activities in which Shaptitsky uh, uh, was involved echoes uh, of the contributions made by our honoree today. According to the scholar Henry Abramson, uh, in 1935, the Jewish community of Lviv greeted uh, Metropolitan Shabditsky on his 70th, 70th birthday, quote, as a true example of culture and the highest ethical principles, who has always shown the same attitudes of understanding and justice to the people of Israel as to other peoples. The Harvard historian Eric Goldhagen wrote, quote, no other ecclesiastical figure of equal rank in the whole of Europe displays such sorrow for the faith of Jews and acted so boldly in their behalf as did Archbishop Andrei Shaptitsky. This trust in him was, as the following film will show, confirmed at the time of greatest peril to Ukraine's Jewry during the Holocaust. For his works, as you will understand, uh, a number of Jewish organizations, including the ADL, which in 2013 uh, honored Shaptitsky posthumously with the Jan Karski uh, Courage to Care Award, the U.S. Holocaust Memorial, which too has commemorated his contribution to the saving of 150 Jewish lives during the show. So again, you'll learn more about both the honoree and a little bit about uh, Metropolitan Shaptitsky from a, a very short film and a brief uh, introductory remarks, which will come, uh, and then we will proceed uh, with uh, the ceremony. Uh, so uh, if we can dim the lights and uh, uh, show a very short film, which will help you understand a little bit about this man and this award. I'd like to invite uh, Dr. Kamedes to make his remarks. Thank you very much, uh, Adrian, ladies and gentlemen. I always become emotional when I see the even selections of this uh, film. I want to thank you very much for inviting me to make these brief remarks. 
and I want to offer, first of all, my sincere congratulations to Mr. Lorda for having been awarded the Shatitsky Medal. I met Metropolitan Andrei Shatitsky 76 years ago when my father brought me then seven years of age to Sviata Yura and Lviv right after the terrible action of August 1942 that resulted in the deaths of 60,000 Jews and convinced those still alive that the German plan was to murder every Jewish man, woman, and child. I'm here today with you only because Metropolitan Shiktitsky and the brothers of the student order had the conviction and the moral courage to answer the biblical question, am I my brother's keeper in the affirmative? Theirs was a lonely beam of light on an otherwise dark and bleak horizon. It is most appropriate for this medal commemorating Metropolitan Andrei Shaptitsky's heroism to be awarded to Mr. Lauder. And I would like to emphasize three characteristics shared by both. A deep and abiding faith, evidence of courageous independence, and the saving of Jews. Shaptitsky, despite his Polish noble birth, became an archbishop in the Ukrainian Catholic Church and throughout his life had a deep religious faith. Ron Lauder's leadership role in a number of Jewish organizations and his, his historic development of Jewish educational institutions in Eastern Europe is proof of his abiding faith in Netzach Israel and the eternal future of a dynamic Jewish people. Both Shaptitsky and Lorda have shown independent courage. At the dawn of the 20th century, Andrei Shaptitsky was severely criticized by his fellow church leaders for his friendship towards Jews, but insisted that his moral compass, rather than political expediency, determine his actions. 30 years ago, when Lorda saw a need and began building a network of Jewish schools summer camps and youth groups throughout Eastern and Central Europe. Most of the Jewish community thought he was wasting resources and trying to revive a graveyard. But thankfully, he believed and persevered. Both Shaptitsky and Lorda saved Jews. As you have heard, Shaptitsky saved approximately 150 Jews, including me, from certain death. Lorda has saved thousands of children's souls and minds, children who otherwise would surely have been lost to the Jewish people. Before I conclude, it's appropriate for me on this occasion to pay brief but special tribute to the memory of Rabbi Haskell Besser, who played such a major role in establishing the Lorda programs in Poland. Rabbi Besser was a neighbor of ours in Katowice, where both of us were born. We lived on the same street, Direct Sena. My family at number 10, and his at number 3. My fondest memory of him is from 1990, when on a street in Katowice, we were approached by a young man who shyly asked whether we were Jewish. Yes, of course, Rabbi Besser, who had the long beard and earlocks of the Hasid that he was, Indeed, and he answered in Polish. The young man then told us that he had been studying Kabbalah and was having difficulty in understanding a particular Kabbalistic concept. We stood on that street in Katowice and patiently Rabbi Vesa explained the concept to him in perfect Polish on the street. It is indeed a strange world. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to uh, invite uh, James Temerty, uh, the chairman of the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, 
organization that works globally uh, on joint projects, including projects with the World uh, Jewish Congress uh, to promote understanding and cooperation among the Jewish community. Globally, um, we uh, only recently began calling uh, my company, Parkland Power, global in its scope. I think it's kind of fair for us because uh, we're in Europe, uh, we're in North America, and now we're in Taiwan, but a little Jewish, uh, Ukrainian Jewish encounter project is not quite yet global, <laughs> but uh, certainly North American and European. Um, it's a great honor for me to uh, be here participating in this uh, ceremony. I have a number of reasons for feeling uh, that way. First of all, because it's held in the memory of one of the great figures of 20th century Ukraine, Metropolitan Andrei Shaptitsky, who did so much as we've heard to uh, save Jewish lives during the Holocaust in Nazi-occupied Ukraine. Secondly, because we are among friends committed to the cause of Ukrainian Jewish and Ukraine Israel solidarity, cooperation, and dialogue. Thirdly, because we are here with our colleagues, Boris Lushkin and his team from the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine, our longtime partners in presenting the Shaptitsky Medal and Award, which was initiated by the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine and Rabbi Yaakov Dov Blyk. And I'm disappointed to see that um, Blyk is not here. Uh, this will be the first one that he's missed, the chief rabbi of Cave. And fourthly, and, and, and most importantly, because we are honoring Ron Pilater, a great leader of the global Jewish community and a friend of Ukraine and of the Jewish community in Ukraine. This gathering, in essence, is what is intended by the name of our organization. Ukrainian Jewish Encounter. The UJE, as we call ourselves, has been an active partner of both the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine and the World Jewish Congress in a number of commemorations and events. In two days, we will be commemorating the 77th anniversary of the murder of nearly 34,000 Jews at the hands of Nazis in the ravine known as Babin Yar in Kiev. Two years ago, we worked hand in hand with the Jewish Confederation of Ukraine and the World Jewish Congress in a major government and non-governmental commemoration of the act of unspeakable horror that was Babin Yar. This summer, we cooperated with the World Jewish Congress and with Boris Lushkin and his team in a conference in Kiev focused on celebrating Israel's 50th anniversary by discussing Israel's experience of nation building and its relevance to the Ukraine of today. In August, we and the World Jewish Congress cooperated in a conference focused on Yiddish literature and culture that was held in Chinitsi, Chernovitz, Ukraine, where 110 years ago, a major conference was convened to address these very same uh, topics. Although there are persistent anti-Semitic acts in Ukraine, as is the case in most nations, I'm happy to note that the predominant tenor of Ukrainian Jewish relations there and in the diaspora is one of mutual respect and regard. To strengthen this uh, process, we must both honestly address the past and build a future together focused on cooperation and rooted in the fact that a huge proportion of Israelis and the Jewish diaspora can trace their roots to the territory of Ukraine. Let us build common bonds and understanding by working to ensure that the Jewish and Gentile communities of Ukraine cooperate based on the values of freedom, national sovereignty, safety, and national security to which they and the good people of Israel aspire. There is no better representation of the same than this medal 
and award in honor of Andrei Shaptitsky, a moral leader who embodied the best values of tolerance and of the dignity of the human spirit and of all, uh, and of all uh, peoples. And again, it's uh, uh, especially great honor to be participating in awarding this medal to you. Great pleasure to uh, to invite our next speaker, uh, who has brought uh, a new energy to uh, Jewish organized life in Ukraine, uh, building on his uh, connections as a very successful entrepreneur, as a former chief of staff of the president of Ukraine. And today we were discussing that in Ukraine, apart from I think there are about 30 members of the uh, Ukrainian uh, parliament that are of Jewish origin. The prime minister is Jewish. The president's new chief of staff happens to be Jewish. So I think we've we've got a sort of a, a mirror of, of Israel in Kiev. So you're welcome to come and visit and to see uh, a thriving community. And I think uh, we're, we're, we're greatly honored that we are collaborating with uh, such a wonderful partner as Boris Lashkin. Uh, the floor is yours. Jews and Ukraine power because of Roman. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and Hansa Matt. Uh, my gratitude to Rabbi Bleich and the Honorable President of our Confederation, Boris Fuchsman, uh, who founded with uh, Timur Tej and Timur Tej and his team uh, the Shakisky Medal five years ago. Uh, thanks to their efforts, uh, we all have a pleasure to be here in New York tonight. On the flight over, I found myself thinking about how appropriate it is that this ceremony is taking place during the Holy Week of Sukkot. Mm -hmm. The holiday stands for commemorating uh, the time Jews spend wandering the desert on their way to the Promised Land. Uh, this is also a time to take a step back and uh, give thanks. I think it's ideally fitting that we come here tonight to honor Ambassador Ronald Lauder. Ambassador Lauder played an important role ensuring that the Ukrainian Jewish community is not left wandering. One of the reasons why our community is now coming from a place of strength is due to the assistance of Ambassador Lauder. Uh, the Ambassador has acted in more than just words but also in deeds. He has helped bring the entire Ukrainian Jewish community together through the establishment of the Lauder Shua camp, uh, supporting schools and uh, kindergartens both uh, here will be for many years. In, the, in Ukraine and in Europe, there is still a struggle for religious uh, freedom and protection. That's why the work of Ronald uh, and the World Jewish Congress is more important than ever. Uh, Ronald, you have refused to turn a blind eye to the search of anti-Semitism in Europe. Through your efforts to rebuild and preserve Jewish life in Ukraine and elsewhere throughout Europe, you send a strong message to the emerging populist governments, that uh, the Jewish community will no longer be intimidated by ugliness, uh, intolerance, and hatred. Ronald, thanks for everything you have done and continue to do for Ukraine. On behalf of the people of Ukraine and its Jewish community, it is my honor and privilege, along with Jim Timerte, please, to present you the 2018 Shaptiski Medal. Where is the medal?
going to invite Dr. Green. Can you come into the room? Oh, yes, Patrick Farrell, come on up. Yeah. Good. Maybe also in the middle. Or, okay. Yes. No, no, no. Can you raise the. <laughs> Is it coming up?
two people are making great strides together. I know there are still Ukrainians who glorify some of the worst elements of the past regarding anti-Semitism, regarding the role many Ukrainians played in the, in the Holocaust. But today, let us focus on the importance, doing all we can to bring our two people together. And that is what the Ukrainian Jewish encounter is doing. Again, I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I look forward to my next visit to Ukraine. And by the way, I was there how long ago? <coughs> two weeks ago. Two months ago? Well, three, three, three weeks ago, yeah. Two weeks ago. Yeah. Three weeks ago. Um, as always, I went to Bobby Yard. And I must say, we must do more for Bobby Yard because it's too much looking like a park and not enough for what it was. And um, they've done too good a job making it look like peaceful and beautiful, sort of the tragic place it was. There has to be some type of museum, not some type of thing that shows the world what it was. And Tchaikovsky, I don't deserve the award. Although I may have educated many thousands of Jewish children, I don't know if I saved one Jewish life. But the fact is that this man had great courage, unbelievable courage, at a time when so few people had that courage, and so few people raised up, particularly in the religious world. And this man deserves all the credit he can. And my only, my only sadness is that his name is not better well known. But I do believe there should be much more written about him, spoken about him. And I would ask the Canadian Jewish encounter to do much more than they can to carry his name out because he deserves everything we can get. And the Jewish uh, people of Ukraine, I can only say wonderful things. They're not easy. Um, it's a complicated place. Um, I must tell you, every person I've met in Ukraine feels that they should be the head. <laughs> um, and at the same time, they're filled with love, understanding, and it's a pleasure going there. And it's a pleasure and really a wonderful thing to receive this award. I thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Walker. I'd like to invite my colleague, Beryl Rodell, uh, who chairs our advisory board, to make very brief concluding remarks, and then to invite all of you uh, for the reception uh, in the adjoining room. Beryl. Dear guests, Ambassador Walker, who I know is one, and Jim, everybody. Uh, we are in, as Boris Lushkin mentioned, the festival of Sukkot, which is also the Jewish Thanksgiving. Uh, in many ways, the Jewish Oktoberfest. So it's appropriate. <laughs> so it's appropriate that we, on this occasion today, give thanks for the life of Father Shaptitsky and for the farsightedness, commitment, of Ronald Lauder in doing the things they did when they weren't so popular. And for those uh, who think that Ukraine is no place for Jews, they should have been with me in Dnipro, used to be called Dnipro Petrovsky, today it's Dnipro, for Yom Kippur. 1,500 people at Nila, not a suppressed community, vital, joyous, Edited, not much, but these were these were lively people who, incidentally, when I spoke in the 
shul on Shabbat, I concluded my remarks uh, by toasting the future of Ukraine. To vast applause, Nipro and the Jewish community of Nipro played an important role in the defense of Ukraine. Uh, and when I was in synagogue on Yom Kippur, flanking me, the, well, a row or two or three away, were uniformed Jewish uh, Ukrainian personnel, military personnel. So it's a different Ukraine, a different uh, reality. Uh, and the menorah center in Ukraine is extraordinary, visible from space. The world's largest Jewish community center. Astonishing, worth a visit. And perhaps one day we will celebrate a Shabditsky medal in the Ypres. In the meanwhile, without talking about Dnipro again, let us hope that we meet again on this occasion in Kiev. So thank you, Ronald. Uh, and I take to heart your message that part of our mission must be to make the name and model of Andre Shiptitsky better known in the world. And we've resolved to do this this very day. And please join us all for light refreshments, kosher, of course, uh, in the adjoining hall. Thank you for your participation. Thank you.